so I'm going to open up a little bit behind the scenes. Also, check my posture because I have the worst posture in the world. Um, I noticed that some of my, uh, originally when I made this, um, personal page, uh, it was going to be, I had some things that were outdated, so I went ahead and, uh, cleaned it up, uh, put the Twitch link on the top of the page, um, also kind of fixed some of the coding here, uh, some of the headers, um, anyway, those changes are uploaded, and let's see if I can do this coolly. All right, yeah. All right, and so if you go back to the study, I should make this introduction to the study. That would make a lot more sense. I'm gonna change that code right now. Do, 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 do. Changing uh, introduction, introduction to the study. I'm gonna save that. Uh, I'm gonna commit that. Um, give it a little commit message. Um, updated title, not title, but title 0106. Um, enter that and push that code. All right, so that would be a proper introduction for that page. And you don't need to see that anymore. All right, let's go back. All right, so we are going to do... Uh, now, I will get into this episode later. Um, the audience that who actually requested this Bible study, but they're in Kenya. Uh, we can go... I'll make a special episode maybe later this week, and I'll give you guys a heads up. Uh, but I think, like, for the time... Uh, let's go straight into the study. We're going to go Romans 1. So again, again, if you're looking at this live for the very first time, um, this is Theologic Us. It's uh, Theologic.us. That's the URL. And if you if you aren't on the Twitch channel, you will see the links there. And there's a Theologic, uh, Theologic Us. Um, click on that link. It will take you here. And you can click on Bible Study Romans. Uh, again, right now, you're going to see the newest things I've written. Uh, and if you want to get ahead, feel free. Uh, we're already to Romans 11.33 in the blog. But we are just starting out. Uh, so don't worry, you're not far behind. So let's go uh, study Romans 1, verse 1. Okay, again, here is the format of... Our Bible study. This is what you should expect. These are the the parameters that helps me stay on on task, helps you stay on task, uh, and keeps us in the boundaries. And there are there are things that when you study Romans, I think you study any book of the Bible, yeah, you can get off track. You can get um, off the subject, if you will. I would like to say on task. I would like to say on subject. Again, here here's what we have. We have the text. We have the support, the supporting text, as I like to call it. And w let me explain that. That's a little bit more important than just, you know, laying it out there. We have the text that's the main text. So today's main text is Romans 1.1. 1, 1. Here are the supporting texts. What do I think that the supporting text in the Bible that supports the text that we're doing right now? And the reason why I think that is so important is because that allows the scriptures to interpret scriptures. It allows the scriptures to um, uh, explain scriptures. Uh, we can, we have teachers. We have been blessed with uh, great, great Bible teachers, great pastors and preachers and commentaries and seminaries and it, all that, right? And those are all good gifts from God. But I think the very best teachers that we have, the very best commentators that we have, will always, on the text that you want to study, will always use supporting scripture for that. And I don't, it's not going to be way off course, or it's going to make you sound one thing or another. A lot of things you will hear in preaching, and I'm not saying it's necessarily good preaching, but what I have noticed in certain circles is that they will take one text, one text, one verse, whatever, and and that's it. 
That's all you'll hear for the rest of the sermon. You'll hear that one text. That's the only scripture that you'll hear. And then they build their opinions based on that one text. Well, if you go back and read the text and look at the text in 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 context of where the text sits at within the scriptures, and we but my context, I mean, what are the verses on top and below the scriptures actually say? If you kind of read it all together, like I don't think that verse means what you think it means. And and so just kind of like if if you're listening to a lot of preaching, make sure they like like they're using supported texts supported scriptures for the verse they're trying to preach out of just that's very very helpful and that's how i think we're going to do and not i think we're going to do we are actually going to do because look at this romans 1 romans 1 7 through 7 8 through 12 13 and 15 every single one of these bible studies every single one of these posts are built exactly the same way if we come into a passage or I don't know what the heck is going on, I'm going to tell you, I don't know what the heck is going on. This is what other uh, commentaries may say. This is what other Bible teachers, and I'll put that in the post. But if I don't know, I don't know. Because I can't know more than I actually know. Okay? So we have the support. And you kind of like see a little preview of what we're about to get into uh, with the supporting text. What does the scripture say? What does this passage say about God? Where's the gospel in this? What's our responsibility to this? And how, you know, I offer a little prayer that will help you pray. How do you pray from this? So the text, here we go. We are going to uh, take most of our scripture, if not all of our scripture from the Christian standard Bible. If you, I'm a really big fan of the CSB. If you are from the ESV, from the New King James, uh, even the NASB, this is going to be, you're not going to be too far off course uh, with the wording here. So uh, no need to buy a new Bible or anything like that. Uh, It should be pretty close to that. If you're like NIV or uh, more of like a a passage for pastors, a thought for thought, uh, it's going to be, you know, you're going to hit in the ballpark. It's not going to be word for word. Uh, reading, but it's going to be hit very, very close. So uh, have confidence in that. Have confidence in your in your um, in your translation. And for you guys who are big fans of maybe like the message or even the passion, passion, those are not. I would not suggest those are like uh, translations per se. I think those are. Uh, I treat them as commentaries. Uh, I really don't uh, 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 really. Uh, get into the passion that much the passion translation it calls itself a translation i don't call it a translation but the message i treat as a commentary so there we go easy peasy okay romans 1 verse 1 paul a servant of christ jesus called to be an apostle set apart for the gospel of god i think before we even start to dive into romans dive into Really, if this is the first time you ever attended a Bible study, and this is the first time you ever read the Bible, uh, why do we start with Romans? Uh, why not just start at the beginning with Genesis, which we could, or why don't we start with the Gospel, which we could? Um, I'm a big fan of that. Um, I like Romans because it's theologically deep. It it sets a lot of doctrine. I want to say this. It it. I don't think it really necessarily sets doctrine for the rest of the Bible. I think Paul does a great job explaining the teachings of the entire Bible, especially when it comes to the ministry, the life of Jesus Christ. The words that Jesus said and the the teachings that we abide in, I think Paul does an amazing job of explaining each of those. I personally call Romans the systematic theology for the ministry of Christ Jesus. So you're free to borrow that, use it if you will. If you like it, if it's clever, go ahead and use it. Now, sorry, I am I am munching on these lozenges because I don't have a lot of voice to talk for a long time, so just bear with me. All right, now, before we get into Romans, before we get into the rest of the Bible, we got to know who's Paul. Why are we talking about Paul? Every 
every commentary, every p- pastor, anybody who's attending seminary, we'll all the early church fathers, we there's a 100% agreement that Paul without question wrote Romans. He wrote this epistle, which means letter. He wrote this letter to the church based in Rome. Now, if you're brand new to the Bible or just a brand new Christian and you've never heard a story, you would say, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. You automatically think, as I thought, Paul must be a really upstanding dude. He must be a really um, holy. He has been just... Uh, he has been good all his life. He has done the right thing all of his life. He uh, and God just like saved him. And he's like, yes, you're. I'm going to call you to be an apostle, and I also want you to write the most books of the Bible. Um, uh, and you're just going to just walk in Shekinah glory. I feel like if you're going to if you're going to talk about Romans, you're going to talk about Paul. If you're going to talk about Paul, you're going to. We have to talk about. How Paul got here. How did he get to the place where he said, I am a servant of Christ Jesus. I am called as as an apostle. I am set apart for the gospel of God. And what does that actually mean? And if you talk about Paul, you got to start off with his conversion story. And so go to, um, and I won't read this. This is a lot of reading, but uh, go back to Acts chapter nine. So in your Bible, just flip back. Go backwards until you will see Acts go to nine and you're going to see we're starting at verse one. Now Saul was still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. You're like, okay, why do we're talking about Saul? What you don't, you may or may not know, Saul becomes Paul. And you're like, oh, well, he changed his name. Why did he change his name? We're about to get to that. We're about to get to that. Um, So read along with me. Now, Saul was still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. He, so Saul hunted Christians down. Uh, He went to the high priest and requested letters from him to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any men or women belonging to the way, that is the way of Christ, he might bring them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he traveled and he was near Damascus, a light from heaven suddenly flashed around him. Falling to the ground, he heard a voice calling him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? But look at Saul's response to this voice out of the clear blue. Who are you, Lord? And the voice responds, I am Jesus, the one you're persecuting. He replied, but get up, go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. This is Saul's conversion to Christianity. And how do we know? How do we know like, oh, like Saul had a change of heart. Uh, now he follows Jesus just because he blind, he got blinded. But look at the response of Saul. Who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? And now you, I will, I am Jesus. And you will be told what you must do. Saul went into Damascus and met with the disciple named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, here I am, Lord. He replied, this is another follower of Christ who obeys Christ. When Christ speaks to us, we obey. Get up and go to the street called Straight to the house of Judas and ask for a man from from Tarsus named Saul since he is praying there. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and placing his hands on him so he might regain his sight. And Ananias was like, Lord, I've heard from many people about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has the authority here from the chief priests to arrest all who call on his name. But here's Lord's response. Look at this. This is the weight of glory that he has placed on this man Saul. The Lord said to him, go for this man is my chosen instrument to take my name to the Gentiles, kings, and Israelites. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. And Acts 9 goes on to complete Saul's conversion to Christianity. He was baptized. He was healed of his sight. And eventually, Saul becomes Paul. And in our Bible studies, in, in the my living room, we have the same Bible study. And uh, 
Paul reminder, he becomes little. He becomes Paul actually means little. He's the little. He's the little disciple. What I find really fascinating, if you were able to take all the letters that Paul wrote, so we have Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 and 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy and Titus, Philemon? Yeah. All those books of the Bible that were written by Paul, and you look at the introduction, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus. What's so crazy is that if you were able to do it chronologically from the first letter he wrote, which I think may have been Galatians, but the first letter he wrote all the way down to the last letter he wrote, which I think was Philippians, it you can actually start to track what he thought about himself. Paul goes from, I'm called as an apostle, to all the way down to, I'm just a, now a mere bond servant. I am a servant of Christ. He goes from like, I'm set apart, I'm called to be an apostle, but the as his years go on, as his years of ministry goes on, the, 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 he doesn't use the title so much as apostle to introduce himself. He calls himself, I'm a servant of Christ Jesus. I'm about to die for this faith, but I'm called to Christ Jesus, our Lord. I really like that what he thought about himself as the more the more healings he saw the more the more scriptures he wrote the more scriptures he taught and and proclaimed and the gospel and and the churches he planted the more he did in the name of God the more he did to the glory of God the littler he became i hope that's a prayer that's my prayer for myself and i pray that for you too so in all of that all of that we have read about Saul, he becomes Paul, he becomes little, he becomes an apostle, he preaches the gospel, he plants churches all over uh, Asia Minor and you know into Europe. Uh, what do we know about God from these passages? Here's my takeaway from that. God will save whom he will save. Um, Romans 9, verses 15 and 16, for he tells Moses... I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it does not depend on human will or effort, but on God who shows mercy. Uh, John 1, 12 and 13, but to all who did receive him, he gave, God gave them the right to be the children of God to those who believed in his name, who were born not of natural descent, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The ESV will say that. Nor of flesh, nor of blood, uh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And in Ephesians 1 5, he predestined us to be adopted as sons through Jesus Christ for himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So, my question to you in the middle of this Bible study is uh, where do you see God in the text? What does the text say about God? And give me one second because I do not have my chat window up here all right I have to do this because I don't have the twitch There we go. There we go. There we go. All right, cool. All right, we're back. So, all right, cool. So, um, yeah, I have to have a chat window because I can't see the chat window uh, if somebody asks a question or um, what have you. Okay, so <clears throat> the good news is, um, well, out of all of that, so what does the text say about God? I say, well, this is what I see, is that no matter what, where we are at, no one is too far gone 
to be saved by God. There's another passage that always struck me as really odd. I think it's in Isaiah or Jeremiah where he says, "Is or I believe it's Isaiah who goes, are, God says, are my arms too short? God does not have T-Rex arms. But more than that, he actually, God the Father, his hand, his hand in, can cover the earth. And no one runs too far. No one goes too long who is outside his mercy or his grace. It, it's like the most despicable, the most evil, the most vile. There's, this was a man who went from murdering Christians, persecuting Christians, to planting churches, preaching the gospel, uh, writing scriptures, writing most of the books more books in the Bible than any other author. Uh, not by word count, but by, by, by book count. Um, I, I just think that that's the beauty. We, we're looking at an author uh, of the of a books of the Bible who was saved by God at his worst. In the middle of his sin, God saves. And that's the good news. There's nothing that you will ever do or will ever or ever done or will ever do that will keep you to being saved from God, for God, from God, unto God. But make no mistake, without a faith in Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you will not be saved. At the exact same time, salvation is not dependent on you, but on him. This is what we call grace. In Ephesians 2, you're from, you know, if you know Ephesians, um, this is everybody i would i would take time to memorize Ephesians 2 especially these verses for you are saved by grace through faith and this is not from yourself it is god's gift not from works so that no one can boast so here's our responsibility if you're listening to the stream you listen to the podcast let it be known that god has made the call to you right now he's extended his hand out and asking you to trust in him he is asking you to trust in him and take him at his word. So don't wait another second. But your, your, your response might be, but I have to clean myself up before I can go to God. I have to do right, do good, go to church, uh, all that. Guess what? All that's crap. It, here's, the, here's, here's where the bar is actually set. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Another response, but can I just wait until I'm on my deathbed to believe in God and, and then I'll be saved to God? Here's a simple fact um, that are simply stating a fact, I believe in God, and living out that fact are two different things. God numbers our days. In Psalm 139, your eyes saw me when I was formless. All of my days were written in your book and planned before a single one of them had begun. We don't know how our lives will be or even less how we will die. But I can tell you something. For all the testimonies that I have ever heard, I have yet to find one testimony from someone who is saved later on in life that they were glad to have met God so late in life. So in other words, I've, I've, it, for every single saint that was saved later on in life, they always will say, I wish I met God earlier. I wish I had known God for all of my life. God is not an escape from hell fire insurance card that you keep in your back pocket in case of an emergency. The best and distinctive, distinctly description I would have of God would be this one, one, one first. Psalm 1611. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is the fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So don't be insane. Choose real life. Fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. Right now, trust in God. Your circumstances might not change. Your life might not get better. And God doesn't really promise that. What he actually promises is the fullness fullness life the abundant life why because your life now because you trust in god now you are fully alive 
that you are truly alive. You might have to go through a lot of healing in your mind and heart, but God promises that all of us, those who put our trust in him, we will be conformed to the image of his son. We will get healing. We will, our minds will be renewed. Um, so today, just trust in him today. Don't wait, just right now, trust in him. So here's my prayer. Lord God Almighty, do what you need to do in order for us to trust in you alone. Swap out my heart for yours. Give me your spirit. Make your home in me. Make me look like your son and give me repentance. Give me your power to murder my sin. Amen. I hope you enjoyed the first episode of Romans 1. Uh, we will be back next week uh, at the same time at noon Monday on Central Time. Um, again, we're broadcasting this mostly for our friends in Kenya. Hello. How's it going? And uh, I will uh, post this to YouTube. And maybe it will make its way into a podcast. I don't know. Anyway, later. <laughs>